these are two uh, uh, measuring devices uh, for distance. Uh, this first one is what we call a cloth tape. Uh, it's actually probably not made out of too much cloth. It's mostly fiberglass, uh, so it's pretty much weatherproof. Uh, one thing that uh, most students, uh, you'll notice it's uh, got feet in red. And this is graduated in tens and hundreds of a foot. Uh, in field engineering, we, uh, we use a base 10 because the English system uh, with fractions and uh, 16ths, 30 seconds and all that kind of stuff is extremely difficult to, uh, to do math with. You'll notice that uh, there's no 10 inches or 11 inches on this. This is in a base 10, so it runs 0.1 through 0.9, up to 0.99, and then we're at the next foot. So uh, this tape reads the same as the steel chain. Now this tape will stretch. If you have 100 feet of it stretched out, uh, you can pull on it. So this tape is not nearly as precise on measuring as the steel tape. However, they're both on a reel and they wind up for storage. This tape, again, uh, you gotta be a little bit careful to hold this because when you start pulling this tape, this handle comes around at a pretty high rate of speed. And if you've got your fingers up here, this handle's gonna come around here, it's gonna take a chunk of hide off of you. So you wanna hold back towards the end of the handle. Again, this tape is graduated uh, in hundreds, tenths, and feet. Again, you won't see any 10 or 11 inches. It's in tenths, ranging from 0.1 to 0.9, and then with hundreds in between each tenth. This particular tape has the ring installed backwards. We'll make us a quick repair. He says. so that we can read all the tape. The very end of the yellow tape is zero, okay, not the end of the ring. So what we're going to do is we are typically interested in horizontal distances. We don't want to measure slope distances like this. We want horizontal distance. So one thing we have to do is we have to have, the tape has to be uh, straight, it needs to be level, and it needs to have a proper tension. Proper tension if we have 100 feet of this stretched out, and if it's laying on the ground, supported on the ground, that's reasonably level, and we stretch it out and, and make a measurement, we need about 10 pounds of pressure of tension. If it's 100 feet up in the air, to be able to get the sag out of the tape, we have to have 20 pounds of pressure to get the sag out of the tape to make a proper measurement. Uh, with this steel tape, uh, it will measure differently uh, if it's uh, 20 degrees Fahrenheit versus 95 degrees Fahrenheit. It shrinks or expands by the coefficient of steel. Uh, you will all in class learn how to make temperature, slope, uh, actual uh, uh, lengths of tape versus what it's supposed to be, correction factors uh, for precise measurement. So what we're going to do, we're going to measure from about the second or third step down horizontally to here. So I want to know the distance from this edge of nosing to this edge of nosing. And he's got a tension spring, so he's going to tell me when we have enough pressure. Now, I've only got about seven feet. So the tension we need is somewhat proportional. If I need about 20 pounds of pressure for 100 feet, I obviously don't need 20 pounds to get the sag out in seven. So how do I know where is level? So he's going to hold that there. Is level up here? Is it down here? Where is level? Well, if you're pretty experienced, a lot of times you can eyeball, and I would say, well, this is approximately level or we can use a hand eye level. And this will be one of the tools that you will purchase. And I simply look through this and I get the bubble, I'll see a bubble in there and a, and a, a horizontal line. And so I'm gonna bend over until I get the horizontal line and bubble level 
level. So I want to be about this height, right about here. So I'm going to measure about this height. That is going to tell me where approximate level is. The next thing we use is I don't ever pull with this reel. Now I can lock this handle and I can hang on to this and I can yank on this. This reel is a wind-up storage device. It is not a pulling device. If we pull on it, we'll put kinks in this tape and the next thing you know, it snaps in two and this happens to be a 200 foot tape and it costs a dollar a foot to replace it. So if it breaks anywhere between zero and 200 feet, it's trash. It cannot be repaired. So what we do is we release enough to where I lay the reel on the ground. Then I have a chain clamp. It looks like a pair of scissors without the shears. And it's got a set of cams. So I simply slip that tape, open it up, slip it in there, and when I squeeze on it, I can pull. Okay? So this is a pulling device. Now then, how do I know where I make a reading on this tape? Do I eyeball it? Well, I don't know if my head is directly over the point. I've got the level pretty well solved. I use my hand eye level. The next thing we use is a plumb bob. And the plumb bob will point to the point that I want. So I'm holding the tape level that I've established by the hand eye level. I've got my clamp on here. I'm going to put a few pounds of pressure on it. The guy on the end there and has a spring, he can see how much I'm pulling. Now see, he is in a situation that's a disadvantage because he's having to hold his hand down there and I'm pulling against his arm. And if we have about 20 pounds of pressure after a while, we're both going to start shaking. We have our arms extended. So what we want to do is, if you're going to do the pulling, he gets in a position where he can brace himself and he can brace his arm with his knee. And I'm going to get both of my feet spread apart And I'm going to hold my hands close to my body. I don't want my arms out here because when I try to pull, pretty soon they get tired and I start shaking. So I'm going to pull them in close to my body. Lock them into my chest. And now all I have to do is lean against him. And I can put all the pressure I want and I won't get tired. So. I do it until the plumb bob point has hit the edge of the step. And it's stable. And then I check and see where the strain's laying across the tape. And it says 6.43 feet. 6.43. Just like angles, we never measure anything once. We have to measure multiple times. So again, He's going to hold zero, and he's going to tell me when he is good. That's something we didn't do previously. He's going to tell me more pressure, and then he's going to say, I'm good, I'm good, and that means he has zero at the appropriate place. As long as I hear him say, good, I'm good, and then I get to where I am good, then I take a look, and this time I got 6.42. So we had 6.43 and 6.42. The actual distance by statistical averaging would be 6.425. So there we just improve the capability of the direct reading of this uh, tape by five thousandths instead of a hundredth. So that's how we do change.